Je vais bien, merci. Je suis... Artificial intelligence is the world's hottest tech, and France boasts bright young software engineers and promising startups. On a développé une technologie de deepfake qui permet de cloner une version de vous-même. The problem is, Europe is still not the one driving innovation. On est tous très loin des Chinois et des Américains. In its search for a champion, France talks a big talk about open source AI, stirring debate. There's um, too much that we can't control yet with these systems to be just carelessly putting them available to every bad actor in the world. Je crois pas que les choses puissent dérailler de manière si vite, si rapide. One Paris startup is already becoming a success story, but there's much more at stake than just national pride. Museums are meant to immortalize painters and sculptors. I notice you've only got half of your ear. What happened there? Ah, uh, the incident with my ear. It was the result of a heated argument with Paul Gargan. With its recent Vincent van Gogh exhibition, the Musée d'Orsay went one step further, resurrecting the artist from the dead. The intensity of our discussions in Arles took a toll on me, and in a moment of despair and frustration, I made the regrettable decision to sever my own ear. What do you think about AI? Van Gogh would answer whatever questions visitors asked him because Jumbo Manor, a startup from Strasbourg, had recreated him using artificial intelligence. L'IA se nourrit de 900 lettres environ. Around 900 letters have been digitalized and fed to the AI. Absorbé, si je puis dire, par par l'IA. They are the artist's own writings, allowing him to respond to visitors faithfully. Et c'est ainsi que cette IA peut renseigner le visiteur. The AI gets better as the public asks questions. The more questions they ask, the more precise it gets. This necromancy is far from the only mind-boggling AI project in France. Station F in Paris is one of the world's largest startup campuses, and everyone here has a big vision for how AI will change the world. Rivel Opogam, je suis cofondateur d'Argile. Timothée Sinobert, I am business development lead at White Lab Genomics. Thomas Diani, I'm the co-founder of Pimento. We developed a deep fake technology which clones a version of yourself based on a two-minute video. After that, you can create content from scratch using only a text prompt. Our mission is to unleash the power of genomic medicine with artificial intelligence. We are collaborating with biotechnology and pharmaceutical companies to help them in their development for these very complex treatments. We help creatives who are looking to expand on their artistic direction to get better, more creative results more quickly. The number of successful French startups has multiplied in recent years, but still lags well behind the US, China, India, and the UK. And none of the world's 30 largest tech companies are French. But there's a real hope that things might be different for artificial intelligence. Tech and telco billionaire Xavier Niel, who founded Station F, has a new project with logistics magnate Rodolphe Sade and former Google CEO Eric Schmidt. It's called QTI, a non-profit lab with a 300 million euro budget dedicated to building a machine that surpasses human ability. This is often termed artificial general intelligence, a phrase used prominently in QTI marketing, though CEO Patrick Perez pushed back on using that language. La terminologie, uh... The term artificial general intelligence is a bit ambiguous. To keep things simple, what interests us is working on large, very capable models with lots of skills. We're interested in going beyond language, with sound, images, etc., what we call multimodal AI. That's what we're interested in. But 
but the real poster child for France's ambitions is Paris startup Mistral AI. It has one of the most lightweight, powerful AI models out there and is valued at around 2 billion euros less than a year after being founded. Both Qtai and Mistral have committed to publishing the code behind their projects for everyone to see and use, which is often called open source. This is different to closed source, where companies keep their code private and then just release the finished product. In an interview with Le Monde, Mistral CEO Arthur Mensch defended open source as making sense from both a business and a safety point of view. We started with open source models that anyone can deploy for free because it's a way to distribute more widely and create demand. Open source is the best way to make AI safe. It allows researchers to work on safety and controls. France's propensity for open source runs deep. French-American company Hugging Face hosts the go-to website for sharing AI projects and software with users from around the world. And the only big tech company that's all in on open source is Meta, whose chief AI scientist Yann Lecun is French and known to be an influence on French policymakers. Some argue, though, that there are great risks to letting these systems out into the wild. Joshua Bengio won a Turing Prize for his work on machine learning alongside Yann Lecun, but his opinion on open source couldn't be more different. Right now, scientifically, we don't know how to build them so that they cannot be misused for things like, uh, you know, disinformation, uh, building, uh, helping humans like terrorists to build all kinds of weapons. There's um, too much that we can't control yet with these systems to be just carelessly putting them available to every bad actor in the world. Imagine, for instance, the world was hit by another pandemic. The cause, a bioweapon created using open source software. Risks like these are often cited by the AI safety community. Would France's open source champions hold themselves accountable were such a catastrophe to occur? This kind of misuse is brought up a lot by people who support extreme regulation and closed models. There's nothing today which shows that the open models that exist already allow this to happen. There are examples from the past, particularly in tech and software, which show the benefits of opening up and sharing freely with the community with the industry and with developers. The benefits significantly outweighed the downsides. Jada Pastilli, principal ethicist at Hugging Face, believes accountability must be shared. Personally, I don't think things can derail so quickly in that way. Responsibility is something we must share, so you can't say that it's only the responsibility of the creator or only the responsibility of the user, but it's a kind of spectrum that we must share as much as possible. It's not the same thing if it's a research project or a malicious project. It's not the same thing if it's a medical context or a context of war. For Alexi Grinbaum, a researcher on the National Digital Ethics Steering Committee, there's a lot still to be done on the question of who's responsible for AI misuse. Despite the dual use of these models, I think we have to move towards open source, which does not eliminate the responsibility of the creator that initially trained the model. Putting a model like that on a sharing platform and saying, now you can download it, do what you want with it, that does not mean the creator is void of responsibility. Not at all. Whatever the risks, French President Emmanuel Macron has thrown his weight behind open source. Open source AI, we have to keep investing, accelerating. And he criticized the European Union's AI Act, the first major regulation on the tech globally. We are well behind the Chinese and Americans. We could decide to regulate a lot faster and harder than our competitors, but we'll be regulating a technology that we're no longer producing. The pressure paid off. The final text of the AI Act presents a lighter regulatory burden, particularly for open source projects. 
Some believe France's lobbying was an attempt to give its champions a fighting chance against American big tech and promote a European approach to the technology. France has savoir-faire in cybersecurity. Maybe instead of making very large models like the Americans have done for two or three years now, we could be leaders in filters and controls or in other domains. There's space to do something else than just chase after the Americans. But in a rapidly moving market, things are consolidating. Companies are increasingly offering a mix of open and closed source products, including Mistral. And to the chagrin of those rooting for a purely European champion, Mistral announced a partnership with Microsoft. It's the American giant's second investment in a big AI startup after OpenAI. The San Francisco company behind ChatGPT started life committed to open source, just like Mistral did.